tonight. Open your Bible to the book of Jonah in the Old Testament there. The book of Jonah, everybody knows the story of Jonah. Should know, just about everybody in the United States that's literate or in any age at all knows the story of the prophet Jonah and his experience that he had there as he was uh, uh, swallowed by the whale and, and for three days and three nights as a type of the Lord Jesus Christ going into the heart of the earth three days and three nights and the resurrection. Here in the Bible, um, the book of Jonah, you want to do a little outline of it, you see there's four chapters. In chapter number one, Jonah is running from God. God says, Jonah, I want you to go preach. He says, um, going the other way. And he runs away from God, gets out of God's will. In chapter number two, Jonah is running to God. He winds up in the belly of the whale. He's down there for three days and three nights. And all of a sudden, his life is put in him. He brought up, God brought up his life from corruption. And he said, man, I got to get out of here. Three days and three nights is too long for this place. And he cried and said, God, get me out of here. And he got right. Chapter three, Jonah's running with God. He, that's the only chapter he was right, really right, was chapter three. Chapter 1, he runs from God. Chapter 2, he runs to God. Chapter 3, he runs with God. He preaches one of the greatest revivals, if not the greatest revival in history. Uh, over 120,000 saved that couldn't discern the right hand from the left. What about all the regular people? I'm telling you, that's a mob of people. We've never seen a revival like that in, in this world since, or before probably. So in chapter 3, he's running with God. In chapter 4, he's running ahead of God. That's a good little outline of the book of Jonah. He gets mad because God won't, won't uh, uh, cause God killed the gourd. And put the, he got mad because God didn't do what he prophesied he would do. <laughs> Isn't that something? Uh, so Jonah, he was a character. But he was a great character. And if you'll notice, many of the characters in the Bible had, had extreme ups and downs and, and bigs and littles and ins and outs. Uh, many characters in the Bible seem like could go way up and go way down. Many characters in the Bible were just uh, so extreme one way or the other or both sometimes uh, in the same person. Samson, people like that. And tonight this great story of Jonah and um, I, I want to introduce it by, by just saying this. Can't hardly, I cannot hardly talk about it without... Uh, Without mentioning it, the Bible said that God prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And when Jonah was up there out of the will of God, them men picked him up and they said, it's your fault we're in this mess. And the, the, everybody's about to drown and they picked him up, one of them grabbed his ankle like that. Nothing grabbed this hand, nothing grabbed the other ankle. And they went, huh, one, huh, huh, two, huh. A three, and there goes Jonah, like it's right here. Out in the ocean, brother, I'm in the sea. And he falls down in there. Can you imagine? And he's going down underneath that water, blah, 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 trying to get up. That's the first thing you want to do when you go underwater. That day, you want to get up like that. Well, about that time, God spoke to a fish, a big fish. The Bible calls it a whale. And that whale was real hungry, and he says, hey, Come over here a little bit. Two degrees, 13 degrees this way, 13 degrees latitude, uh, longitude, north, go this way. And he said, boy, I'm hungry. I'd like to have me a mess of man. I ain't had a good old man. I'm going down to man camp, get me a mess of man, some hush puppies, and french fries. I ain't had one in a long time. And the Lord said, there he is right there. And he's seen Jonah's legs dangling like that. And the whale opens his mouth. And Jonah's, now imagine now, he's swimming around in this water like it's right here. All of a sudden, can you imagine? I've been in water. We jumped off that big, uh, that big um, waterfall up yonder at, uh, what is the name of that place? Way up yonder in Avery County. Uh, uh, Falls, what's the name of that place? Banner Elk, it's up that past there. But anyway, scariest thing you've ever seen in your life. We jumped off there one, night, one day a long time ago. A bunch of us went up there on a picnic, six stories high. And uh, they, everybody's jumping off of it, and I, I, I ain't going to do that. And then I seen these girls do it, and I said, well, if a girl will do it, I can do it. So these, these girls jumped off of it, and you have to jump like this, and I run like that. You can't even see the water when you jump. And when, then it, there it is when you're out there in the air. And you go down, and, man, that water's going down. So far. You go down, 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 Elk Creek, 
Elk Creek Falls up there. You ought, you ought to go up there. It's a beautiful place. Unbelievable. And uh, it's ten, five times higher than this ceiling. Five times higher than this ceiling. And uh, man, I jumped off of there and I went down, down, down. I didn't think I was ever going to come up. And you jump in here. You come up way over on the other side of the building somewhere. It pushes you down that way. And I, I can't imagine Jonah in that water swimming around like that. All of a sudden, everything got black, dark. And he felt something under him like a soft, blubbery water slide. Real soft, like that junk Young's had in our play. Marty had playing with it today. Uh, what was that stuff? That old blubber stuff they play with. Kids, it's just like somebody's guts. And, and you felt that thing, and he slid down there in a little pool, and he smelt whale uh, digestive juices inside that well, and it went, whoa in the world am I? Now, we'll, we'll take that story up in a minute, uh, but you know what? Uh, Jonah was in the belly of the well. Now, the Bible said that it was a great fish. Don't ever, listen to me, don't ever let the world, and especially science books and teachers or teachers at school, tell you that a whale is not a fish. Don't let them tell you that. The Bible said it was a great fish. Do you know what that means? It was a great fish. You say, I don't care what you say. God said, here's one of them times where you're going to see if you're going to stand with the Lord or the world. Some of you struggling right now. You're saying, but, but Brother Danny, they have now found out that a whale is not a fish. They have, huh? They who? Found out what? Just got, they named it a mammal? I don't know. I ain't stupid. I know that mammals uh, uh, breathe air. They don't breathe through gills. I know that mammals give birth to their young and their young drink milk. Like, I, I know that. I know that mammals have hair or fur. I ain't stupid. But I ain't stupid enough to deny the Bible. And the Bible says it's a fish. And if you don't think it's a fish, you know what you are? You're wrong. It was a great fish. Yeah, you know, some of y'all sitting there right now, and you're saying, no, it wasn't. It was a mammal. That's because you're brainwashed by the world. Let me tell you something, people. If that book said it's a fish, it's a fish. You say, well, it don't say it's a whale. It sure does. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 12, 40, as Jonah was in the ba whale's belly, it says it's a whale, says it's a fish. You say, well, it's a mammal. Now, it's all right if you say a whale's a mammal, but it ain't all right if you say a whale ain't a fish. That's a denying the Bible. You can say a whale's a mammal all you want to. I ain't got no problem with that. As a matter of fact, God made a distinction back there in Genesis where it said he made great whales and then he talked about fish. God made, made, made a distinction. But the Lord ain't wrong, people. Your book ain't wrong. What are you going to do when the science tells you they found uh, evidence of Jesus' bones over, in, over there somewhere and it's not the resurrection, it's not true. What are you going to do then? You know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to say let God be true and every man a liar just like I've always done. And I'm not going to let a bunch of people that ain't never been dead yet tell me that Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead. I'm not going to let a bunch of people that ain't never been dead yet tell me there's no hell when Jesus died and got the keys of death and hell and rose again. So to, to our introduction tonight, it was a fish. And if I had every scientist in the world here tonight, I would look them right square in the eye and say it was a great fish and depend on God to back me up. I'll never go wrong standing on what he said. Amen? And if you change the definition of a word like gay, to mean like that, that ain't what it meant in the Bible. Just because they change the meaning of a word don't mean we adapt their meaning. We take the Bible meaning of a word. And the Bible's its own interpreter and its own dictionary and its own commentary. And the best commentary in the Bible is the Bible. And the Bible sheds light on itself. And God said, a great fish. Now that we've got that settled, uh, I want you to look at something Jonah said here in chapter 2. In chapter 2, old Jonah come out of that uh, belly of the whale. That he was whale puke there, you know, and the whale puked him out. And he had whale vomit all over him, come preach that revival. And it said, uh, look in uh, uh, chapter 2 and look at verse number 4. Uh, look at chapter 2 and verse number 4. Then I said, who's down here in the belly of the whale, I am cast out of thy sight Yep, I will look again toward thy holy temple. 
Jonah said, Lord, I've been down here and I'm in this mess. I'm going to look again toward thy holy temple. Now, I want to preach on that subject very short here tonight. You better look again. You ever heard somebody come in, they'll tell you somebody, and they'll say something like, uh, I seen so and so, so and so, and somebody will say, You better go back and look at that again. You ever heard that old saying? I mean, we've all said that. We've all heard it. You better go look at that again. You say, uh, Did you clean your room? Yeah, well, uh, you better go look again, son. You missed you miss some stuff. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Sometimes, sometimes it does us good to go back and look at stuff again, don't it? Sure does. And that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. I want to say tonight, First of all, you need to look again at where you started. We need to look again at where we started. Call to remembrance the night that somebody invited you to church and you got saved by the grace of God. I took a little while last Sunday night, gave part of my testimony, and I, I never, ever, ever, ever tell you what the Lord did for me the night I got saved. It's just, it just un, un, joy unspeakable and full of glory. I, I never, I remember how I felt. Uh, when, you remember how you felt when you walked in that church that night or wherever it was you got saved? How many of you in here got saved in a church house somewhere? Would you raise your hand, please? That's a big majority. Or wherever it was, you got, got saved at home. You might have got saved in the car. You might have got saved out in the woods somewhere. But everybody remembers when you got saved. I remember that night, I, how, how sweet it was. And I remember that night going home and telling my mom. My mom, you know, you've heard me tell it over and over and over. I won't tell the whole thing. My mom was so happy. She hugged my neck. And I said, Mom, I got saved. I had something inside me said, tell her. I got up the next morning, rode that motorcycle I had to work, and got fired the next morning of my job. This boy was selling marijuana that I worked with. I never touched it, never, never, I saw it, that's all. And me and him both got fired on the spot very next day. I went back home. I thought, well, I might as well lay down. Well, it's 7.30 in the morning. I laid down. I heard the back door open, and my Uncle Ralph came in the door, and I heard him say, Mom, I just wanted to stop and say I'm glad I heard about Danny getting saved. And it was up there in Nebo. People was getting saved by the multitudes. Over a hundred of us got saved in that revival. And you know what? Sometimes, sometimes it'll do you good just to look again at where you started. I'm telling you, here I am here tonight. I, I got on a suit and a tie and I got a car outside and my bills are paid and my family's saved and all that. Sometimes it'll do me good just to go back and look that where I started. Way back yonder when I didn't know nothing, when I didn't have nothing, when I didn't own nothing. I was 18 years old. I had a motorcycle and an MG little convertible car. That's all I own. And I'm telling you what, I got saved. And when I got saved, I immediately started wanting to hang around the church. I just wanted to hang around the church. Me and these boys would go down to the church when they was having Christmas play practice. We wasn't even to play. And we just, just hang around. I just wanted to be near the church. You know, I felt good when I was in there. I thought, and I like being there. That's where I got saved, right there. And I like being here. I feel, feel God in here. I want to be around the preacher. I mean, you know something that happened to us. 18-year-old, 17-year-old's. 15 year olds, we'd go down to the preacher's house and just sit there and talk. He was 80. Uh, he probably wasn't, but it seemed like he was uh, back then. And I'm telling you, I, 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 I never, ever, ever will forget. I remember I went to Roses up there in Marion. Some of you old people, the old Roses in Marion. The old one, not the one I got now. It was on Main Street. I'd been saved about a week. And I took my money, I had three, four or five dollars, and bought me a Bible. One of them little bitty Bibles about that big had a zipper around it like that. And I walked out of there. I said, I've got my own Bible. I walked into church that Sunday morning. I could not wait for the preacher to get up and say, open your Bible to something. I was going to do it like everybody else was. I'm just as good as you people. I got me a Bible too, buddy. What do you think about that? I'm telling you, I got me a Bible. I'm a Christian, glory to God. I'm saved. I'm, you ain't got nothing on me. I'm going the same heaven you are. Hallelujah. Do you remember that? Sometimes it'll do us good to just go back and look again at where God brought us from and what he'd done in our life when we first got saved. Remember how great it was? Remember how happy you was? 
I remember I, I, it took me a while. I, I still listened to rock music for a while. And I, them preachers get up and they'd say, rock music's bad. And I'd say, well, you, well, you don't know. You don't know that. Well, well, and the reason I did that because I liked it. And, and you know, if you're, if you're not careful, you'll try to justify stuff that you like. And you don't go by what the Bible said, the Lord said. That's where you get in trouble. And uh, you've heard my testimony. I got full of God one night. And I got so filled with the Lord, I couldn't stand it. I, I thought I was going to blow up. I walked out of the church that night, crammed that tape in the tape player in that little OMG. And I mean, it was, it was uh, Sly and the Family Stone or somebody. Like that. Y'all remember old Sly? Lord, have mercy. Uh, and y'all don't remember who Sly and the Family Stone is? Good. You ought to thank God you don't. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to thank you. For let me be myself again. Oh, it's horrible. It's all full of demons. And uh, that purple haze and all the stupid songs they sing. And I'm there putting that say, tape in that player like that. And all of a sudden it went. And a spirit went out. And I felt different. And I said, that's what's wrong with this. It drained me. It drained the spirit of God out. And you know what? Right, I didn't have to have no more talks about it. We got together. We got big old trash cans that big. We put all of our rock and roll inside that trash can, set it on fire, and buddy, them people said they could see demons coming out there. I don't know. They claimed they could. I've, I've heard them claim that. All them spirits coming out of them. I don't know if that's true or not, but they said they could. I didn't see nothing, but that is stunk. And I'm telling you what, brother, we burned them things. We started listening to Christian music. When you're used to beat when you're used to a beat and a lot of bass and everything, and you go to this just nothing but a piano, I mean, it's an adjustment. I mean, it's an adjustment, and you have to train yourself to let it feed your spirit and not your flesh. Amen. Right? You sure do. You say, but I like it. I like it too. But I knew that I could not stay filled with the spirit and listen to that kind of music. I remember I went to town, and I, I bought me with the same roses, I'd never done this in my life. Well, I wore a tie, you know, when we had to go to something to school. They made us wear ties to our basketball game. We had to wear a blazer and a tie. Everybody, all of all us had a red tie, black blazer, and that's the way we dressed in a public school. Now, Christian school does that. They're Pharisees and legalists. And that. In a public school, our coach said, when a team walks in all dressed nice like that, he said it gives them 10 points on the other team walking in. I don't know if that's true or not. He, he said it had an intimidating effect. I said, whoa, whoa, these guys mean business. But anyway, I didn't wear, I never wore a tie except for that. And I went to Rose's and bought me a pair of khaki pants, about the color of that guitar, and I bought me a brown blazer jacket and a shirt and a tie. I could not wait till Sunday morning to wear that shirt and tie to church. I just couldn't wait. And nobody told me to. Nobody told me I had to. I just wanted to do it. I seen the preacher. I seen all. I said, I, that's what I want to look like. And uh, uh, I, I worry about boys that want to look like Eminem. I worry about girls that want to look like Madonna. I worry about, there's something wrong. Who's your idol anyway? I'm not saying you have to wear a tie, but I'm just saying, listen, I said, I want to look like that. Boy, I come in that Sunday morning, I have my tie on. I, I think I was 19, and my pastor's wife come up and said, Oh, Danny. She's about 82. And she said, Danny, you look so nice. And I'm telling you, I'd have rather heard her say that than all them kids I went to school with. Something happened to me. Something happened to me. I said, amen. I done got my hair cut. My hair was down to here. I had a stupid looking pair of blue jeans with a flag sewed on them right here. Back on the hippies, you know. That, uh, had, uh, I mean, brother, we was fresh out of Woodstock. <laughs> and I, didn't, I did not go to Woodstock. I thought that was crazy. Uh, but I'm telling you what, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 sometimes, sometimes it just does me good to just go back and look again at where I started. <laughs> Lord of God, through many dangers, tolls, and snares, I have already come. It's grace that brought me safe thus far. Hallelujah, and grace will lead me home. I didn't get religion, brother. I got saved. Sometimes you're better off to go back and look again at where you started. Number two, let me say, sometimes you need to look again at where you strayed. Sometimes you need to look again at where you strayed. You need to, old Jonah, uh, I, I bet you he, had to, he said, I will look again. You know what Jonah did? 
He said, now I remember the other day when God told me to go preach that revival in Nineveh and I took off the other way. He said, right there's where I messed up. When God said go preach and I didn't, there's where I got off track. Now everybody that's backslid, everybody here this evening that say you used to serve God and something crazy happened or another, I'm, I encourage you tonight, go back and look again at where you strayed. If you'll look back, there's somewhere, some point where you got off, off the track. Ain't, ain't that right? It could be a divorce. It could be a loss of job. It could be a death in the family. It could be something devastating that life changing a sickness or something like that. It could be somebody you met. I've had a lot of people tell me, they said, Brother Danny, I used to serve God. I used to be in there 100%, and I met old so-and-so. And my life went downhill from then on. I got out, and we got to drinking, and we got to getting high. And the next thing you know, I was out of church. It all started right back there when I met old so-and-so. I've had a many a girl tell me, Brother Danny, I was serving God. I was so happy. I was singing in the choir. I was in the bus ministry. I was living for the Lord. And then I met old so-and-so. And after I met so-and-so, he just pulled me right out. He made me fall in love with him. And the next thing I know, he was telling me I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. And he just jerked me right out of God's will and took me out. And brother, you know what you need to do? You need to look back at where you strayed. You need to look back at where you strayed. Amen? And just get back in there for the glory of God. You're like a stranded ship. You're like a car broke down on the side of the road. You're like an eagle with a broke wing like him over at Dollywood. You're like a guitar with the strings all, all broke. You need, you, need to, you need to realize where you got off track. You need to realize where, you know, uh, somebody have a wreck out there and the cops will come. You ever seen when the cops come, they'll, they'll mark the road with spray paint and say, well, here's where he went off the road. Here's where the impact was, slid 30 feet. Uh, hit this other car, they can tell if you was on the wrong side of the road, right side of the road, and they mark it all out. And when they, when they try to investigate, they say, let's go back and look and, and, and go through that thing again and see how it happened. That's what some of you need to do. You need to go back in your life and see where you got off and get back on right there, right there. Lord, here's what I've done. I quit my Bible reading. I quit my praying. I quit being faithful to church. I quit Sunday school. I quit tithing. Right, right. I'm getting right back on. I'm going to look again at where I strayed. I'm going to get back where I used to be. There's, there's probably 50 people sitting in this building tonight that you say, Brother Danny, I used to be so on fire to, for God. I just don't know what happened. Now I just have to make myself come to church. I just can't get nothing out of it. You know what you need to do? Look again at where you strayed and go back there and fix it and get back where you need to be. You need to look again at where you strayed. I said this woman wanted to come in one time and uh, this boy come in he said, Mama, he said, my, my shirt's dirty. I think, but I don't know if it's dirty enough to wash. You ever had them like that? Like this shirt I got on right here. Uh, I wash these white shirts, and I, well, I put Clorox in them, and that stuff Kelly gets, I don't know what it is, and, and put that in it and, and everything, and they come out smelling good and clean. But I'm not, like this one's wet right here right now. And I ain't been up here about 15 minutes. It's wet, and it's cold in here too. Uh, and I was, I was, I'm sweaty, and that gets dirty. I don't know, that dirt comes out of it. You can wash your neck 15 times and wear a white shirt and there'll still be a dark ring around it. Like where I'm sweating right there, they will have a dark ring. Where's that dirt come from? Out of me. You're dirty inside. Like old, when Lefty let Fatty have it, the dirt came out. Sure did, that's what the Bible said. There's dirt in you. Yeah, I don't, yeah, try it, try it. Wash your neck with 15 kinds of soap and wear a white shirt and sweat it like I am right now and it'll have a dark brown collar. And I spray them with Windex, brother. That's the best thing. <laughs> you take, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Get, uh, try it. Uh, you can spray it with Windex and rub it real good and wash them. It'll come right out. That's the only thing I know to take it out. And uh, uh, but now I sweat and then if I let this sweat dry and then wear this shirt again tomorrow to play ball in and I'm going to sweat again, it's going to start stinking. Now, your first sweat don't stink if you don't eat a bunch of onions and garlic. Onions and garlic like drinking liquor. I mean, it comes out your pores, man. 
comes out your neck and everywhere like that. Doritos, just st stuff that stinks. I don't eat stuff like that because I like to have friends. I, I'm, you know, I don't want everybody saying, <laughs> we're, we're, there's been people in this church come here and say, hey, Brother Daniel. I say, hey, how you doing? Well, hey, Brother Daniel. Hey, how? and I just look like you, trying to keep them, trying to get them out of my face. Knock you down. And you know what? This, it stinks. And what you need to do, what they, what they said this guy done, he brought this shirt in like this, and he brought it in and he said, Mom, do you think this shirt's dirty? And here's what she said. She said, if it's doubtful, it's dirty. <whistles> oh, what a truth. She said, if it's doubtful, it's dirty. That means if you have to ask, is it all right? It probably ain't. If you have to ask, do you think this is wrong? <laughs> I asked my pastor one time. I haven't been saved very long. We went swimming at the Moose Lodge every day. We talked Daddy into joining the Moose Lodge so we could go swimming because nobody had a swimming pool. We knew one guy, Nebo, that had a pool, and he hated us. I don't know why. Maybe it's because we took drink cartons and knocked his mailbox over. But I think we done that after he said we couldn't go swimming. And we'd, we'd ride around Nebo at night and take these drink cards and just slam them against everybody's mailbox. I know that's a terrible, terrible thing. I felt the glass come back and hit me in the, in the arm before. Back then, everybody drunk Pepsi's in a bottle. It's, it's really, don't do it, but it's sort of fun, really. You, you, try to, you go down the road, and here comes the stop sign, you slig it way before you get there, and right time you get there, bam! It's fun. Don't do it. That's wicked. And I do not do that anymore. Does he? Slim Jim does that? I'm crushed. <laughs> but I, we got in trouble for that. We took a, a, we'd throw all the drinks out of a case. You remember the drinks used to be in a case? And then throw the case out the window. And the case would knock somebody's mailbox off, the, off of the post, brother. Well, he didn't like us, so he wouldn't let us go swimming. And I bet you, they, Ronnie there probably knows, over on old number 10, one man had a pool. I bet you'd know it by talking <laughs> At Cordell, <laughs> and uh, uh, we, we we went swimming. Uh, that we talked. Daddy and joined the Moose Lodge. So when Daddy joined the Moose Lodge, if you remember the Moose Lodge, your kids go swimming every day. Over our Nebo, we went swimming every day, every day. Lord have mercy, seven days a week. And I started feeling guilty about it. If it's doubtful, it's dirty, because there's wild people over there and there's drinking, you know, and everything. So I asked my pastor. I said, Pastor, I'm sort of feeling guilty about going going swimming on Sunday. Because uh, I'm going to Moose Lodge. He, he said, well, he said, uh, are you witnessing? He was really a tactful guy. I, I would have said, you, you ought to know better than go somewhere that stupid. You know, but he said, are you witnessing when you go? And I said, not really. And he said, he said maybe. And he, I thought, right then, I was struggling. It's doubtful. It was doubtful. Nine times out of ten, if you have to ask somebody, is something all right? It usually ain't. Amen? And that's what Jonah, Jonah, he came out and he said, Lord, I want to get back where I ought to be. I want to get back where I was. I'll serve you. I'll go preach in Nineveh. I'll preach anywhere if you want me to do it. He took a look back at where he strayed. Quickly, I'll say this because I'm thinking I'm through. You need to look again at where you struggle. You need to look again at where you struggle. All of us have places and things in our life we struggle with. Your struggle might be who knows what, alcohol, drugs, money, uh, fortune, fame, pride, ego, flesh, lust, uh, some kind of drug, pills. All, all of us have things in our life that we struggle with. And sometimes you've got to go back and look again at what you struggle with. Struggle with. You ever? Some people get off track because when they're struggling, they just give up and say, "Well, I'll just go ahead and do it. I don't care. It's too hard to fight. Uh, it's too hard to fight, and I just ain't gonna fool with it." You need to look again at where you struggled. Amen. Or maybe that filth, or maybe that, maybe that. Uh, most people that get in trouble, most people get in trouble, get hanging around with somebody they shouldn't be around going somewhere they shouldn't be going, and then the temptation comes, and the next thing you know, you're doing something you're not supposed to do, and there you might need to go back and look at where you struggled. Listen, let's just put it plain, we'll hurry. If you know people's going to be doing 
what you used to do or shouldn't be doing, have enough brains to say, no, I'll not go to that place. I'll not go to that gathering. I'll not go to that movie. I'll not go to that party. I'll not go to that place. Because if you know you're going to be tempted, I mean, why put yourself in that position? Learn to say, hey, uh uh-uh, I done been down that road. Jonah said, "Uh uh-uh, buddy, I ain't doing that again. By the grace of God, I learned my lesson. I ain't going back there no more. Look again at where you struggled. If you got a weakness for alcohol, don't get a job in a convenience store selling it. Matter of fact, if you ain't got a weakness for alcohol, don't get a job selling it. We'll talk about that some other time. But lastly, this evening, I'll say this and I'll be done. You need to look again at the scriptures. Now the Bible said you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The Lord, them disciples said, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? Memorize scripture. Memorize scripture that speaks to your problem. If you've got a problem gossiping, get you a bunch of verses about gossip and quote them to yourself, quote them to yourself, quote them to yourself, quote them to yourself. Uh, uh, Brother Mike hit on it in Sunday school this morning. I was hearing him. He's talking about sometimes, you know, when you want to gossip real bad, we all do this, and you feel it coming up, and you know, and you want to say something so bad you can't stand it, but you know you shouldn't, and you just go ahead and let it out. And boy, it feels good to the flesh just to put your two cents worth in and say it. And then you feel guilty and you feel wrong. Like, I shouldn't have said that. That didn't help nobody. It was not right for me to criticize that person. It was not right for me to put bad thoughts about that person in their in your mind. And it, and it shouldn't be. You shouldn't learn, you should learn not to talk about each other. You should learn to keep your mouth shut if it's going to hurt somebody else in the church or out of the church for that matter. But especially right here in the church. You ought to keep your mouth shut. And and I'm not I'm not saying this because I'm the preacher. I'm not. I would definitely say this if I was not the pastor. And I've said it in a lot of churches. You, you're crazy if you do or allow your family, your wife, your kids to criticize the preacher or the teacher or anybody because your little kids are listening and they ain't going to have no confidence in them and not going to listen. They might, they might reject what's being said because mom and daddy can't keep their gospel mouth shut. Shouldn't say it anyway, but if you do say it, you sure shouldn't say it in front of your kids. They, your kids shouldn't know who the women in the church that you don't like. If they do, you need to get your heart right with God. You got no business talking about the other ladies in front of your kids or not in front of them. If you got a problem, pray about it. If it's something that needs to be dealt with, let's talk about it and deal with it. If it's not, get over it, put it under the blood, and go on. Look at where. Look, look again at the scriptures. If you got a problem with alcohol, get you some verses on alcohol. If you got a problem with watching dirty stuff on your TV or your phone, get you some verses. And so look at the only woman last night there committed adultery in his heart. Look at some of that stuff I talked about this morning. Learn those scriptures. Look, we need to look again at the scriptures. Whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. We need to hate sin. Every one of us need to do like Jonah tonight and say, I'm going to look again. I'm going to look again at the scriptures. I'm going to look again at where I struggled. I'm going to look again at where I started. I will look again toward thy holy temple. Let's do that tonight. Let's stand with our heads bowed, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I will look again. You better look again, friend. I wonder this evening, before we go, how many just say, Preacher, I want to look again. I just want to thank God for what he's done when he saved my soul. I'm going to look again at where I started. I'm going to look again at where I strayed. I'm going to look again at where I struggled. I'm going to look again at the scriptures. Come on, come on, let's pray tonight. Come on, young people, mamas and daddies. Teenagers, let's go. Amen. Amen. I'm going to look again. I'm going to look again. I'm going to look again. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to be a better better man, a better Christian, a better woman, a better husband, a better wife, a better church member, a better bus worker, a better choir member, a better 
representative of the Lord Jesus Christ on my job. I'm going to look again. I'm going to look again. Father, help us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for everyone in this altar this evening. I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd use this message to help somebody along the way. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your word, and I pray that you'd bless it. Use it for thy glory. Have you in our lives? We'll thank you and praise you for it. Bless everybody on this altar tonight and help every one of us just once in a while to look again at where you brought us from and where you're taking us to. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Some still praying tonight. We'll take a minute just tear.